Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. Come and eat. Shalom and welcome to Waters in the Wilderness, a teaching ministry of Hoshana Rabbah Biblical Discipleship Resources. I am Natan Lawrence, and today I am speaking to you from the wilderness. In fact, the area where I'm speaking to you from is its not the land of Israel, but it's very much like the land of Israel. It's kind of a high desert with sagebrush and juniper trees and rocks. And um, I'm actually about halfway around the world from the land of Israel. I'm in the state of Oregon, the west coast of the United States. And uh, this is my backyard. Most people, when they think of Oregon, they think of a lot of rain and they think of rainforest. But most people don't realize that the eastern two-thirds of the state of Oregon is like the area where I'm talking to you from pine country, high desert, it's dry, rock, rim rock, and uh, a lot of juniper and sagebrush, and very little rain. But it's apropos that I'd be talking to you from this location, because many of you feel like you're in a spiritual wilderness. Many of you, I like, I like to ask a question, how many of you are in the church that you were born and raised into, or the church that you started in your spiritual walk with? Most people, most of the time when I ask this question, most people will raise their hand and say that they are not in the spiritual orientation or the church or the denomination that they were born or raised into or initially came into. But they've been on a spiritual journey, and they're not where they first started. And we're all on a spiritual journey. And this spiritual journey takes us through many different spiritual waters in many different spiritual wildernesses, if you will. You know, when the children of Israel, <clears throat> when Elohim brought them out of the land of Egypt, He led them through the wilderness. They didn't make it, even though it was an 11-day journey from Israel into the promised land, for one reason or the other, for various reasons, he had them wander the wilderness for 40 years. And that's a lesson for us because our life is like a wilderness. We haven't reached the kingdom of heaven yet. We haven't reached the spiritual promised land of Yeshua's kingdom on earth or the new heaven and the new earth and the new Jerusalem. That is yet to come. So we are in this wilderness called life, and we're on a spiritual journey, and it's a journey of discovery. There's times when we're in the valleys, and there's times when we're in the mountains. There's times when we feel like we're all alone, and as you can see, the wind is blowing, and sometimes it's cold, sometimes it's hot. Sometimes where I'm speaking to you from, there's snow. Sometimes it's searing hot weather. Right now it's in the spring, so it's not too hot, but the wind is blowing, as you can see in my hair. And it's in the spring, and so the temperatures are not too hot, not too cold. It's t-shirt weather. But this is very much a picture of our spiritual walk. We kind of go from one oasis to another, one spiritual place of watering to another, and many times... We get thirsty along the way. We get hungry. We feel like, where is God? Has He left me? And then sometimes we have a mountaintop Mount Sinai experience and we feel really close to Him and then we're back wandering in the wilderness. Sometimes we're being attacked by the enemy, the Canaanites or the Amalekites or the fiery serpents in the wilderness. Sometimes we're murmuring just like the children of Israel. And sometimes we're part of a spiritual camp and we feel like breaking out on our own and and they're wandering around and, and we feel like we're we need to go somewhere else and it's sometimes confusing and that's why many people are exploring something more beyond the church system that they were 
raised in or came into somewhere along the way. Whatever your ABC church, ABC denomination called the Christian church. And they want something more, but they don't know what. And many people are exploring the Jewish or the Hebrew roots of the Christian faith. Many people are finding a, a uh, you know, they're suddenly awakening to the Jewishness of the gospel message, to the Jewishness of Yeshua, to the Jewishness of the early church and of the apostles. They're reading their Bibles and they're, they're saying, they're discovering things that, that they never saw before. They're suddenly beginning to feel a love for the Jewish people, a love for the land of Israel. They're suddenly deciding or, or feeling like they want to go visit Israel. They want to see the places where Moses walked and the children of Israel walked. They want to see the places where Yeshua and the prophets and the apostles and the early church where they walked and where they lived and what they did. They, they just feel a yearning deep within their heart. And they're feeling a kinship with the Jewish people. And they're feeling like they want to help defend and, and love the Jewish people who are, who are carving out um, an existence and a country there in the land in the Middle East called the state or the land of Israel. But they're fighting tremendous odds. And many Christians are like wanting to learn more. They're wanting to explore their Hebrew roots and they can't explain why. You know, I get letters, emails from all around the world from people that come into our, our ministry, Hoshana Rabbah Biblical Discipleship Resources, and uh, people in, in countries where you wouldn't even know that they spoke much English, but in sometimes in good English, sometimes in broken English, we get phone calls from Africa and letters from India and Europe. And, and Asia, and Central and South America, and all around the United States, and Canada, and Australia, and New Zealand, and, and, and uh, Africa, and the Middle East, we get letters, people asking questions. They're learning about the Sabbath. They're learning about the biblical feasts. They're wanting to understand more. They're wanting somebody to teach them. And so this is a movement. This is a spiritual awakening that's going on. Nobody's orchestrating it. There's no denomination. There's no organization. There's no great, powerful, money-backed, resource-backed organization that has the power to reach out to all these nations. There's only one person, if you will, that has the power, and that's the God of Israel. He's awakening His people. He's awakening them to something more. Most of these people know Yeshua. They know the gospel message. They know the power of the cross, the resurrected Messiah. They have been come into the church. Many of them, most of them are born again. Many of them are spirit-filled. But they're beginning to read their Bibles and they're beginning to see that there's something more in there that they have not been taught. And their eyes are becoming awakened to see things in the Bible that they haven't seen before. And they're seeing things that the church over the years has said, no, it's not for us. That was done away with. And they're seeing traditions of men that are in the, in the church system that don't line up with the Bible. Traditions, customs, pagan tendencies, pagan traditions. And they're saying, whoa, that's not in the Bible. I want something more. And in the meantime, from within, their hearts are stirring and they're searching the internet, they're looking for information, and they're wanting to understand. And so we get letters, we see that uh, all over uh, from, from uh, the information on our website, we see uh, from all over the country, you know, a hundred countries, people are coming and searching out. And we're not the only ministry, there's many ministries that teach about the Torah and teach about the Jewishness of, of Jesus or Yeshua, and they're wanting to learn more. So this is a movement, if you will, I hate to use the term movement, but it's something that we understand, it's terminology that we can comprehend, but it's a movement that is happening around the world and is not being orchestrated by anybody except the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Yehovah Elohim, the God of the Bible. And it's a prophetic movement. It's an end time movement. 
that is happening, we believe, in preparation for the return of Yeshua, the Messiah, the second coming of Jesus Christ. And we'll talk about that more in another video. But I want to ask you this question and then answer the question, what is the Hebrew roots or the Messianic movement? That's a question that many people uh, want to know the answer to. Well, you know, again, I hate labels. The Bible doesn't use labels. Men use labels, and the moment you use a label, then it gets a, a frozen picture in people's minds, uh, and, and, and it, li it draws lines of demarcation, and, and it, it can be sound exclusivistic or, or uh, def overly defining. So, you know, I hate to use these labels. I would call it a back to the Bible movement, back to the foundations of our faith, back to the book of Acts, back to the Gospels, back to you, not just who Yeshua was, but what Yeshua taught and what he practiced, what the apostles of Yeshua and the early followers, the early believers in Yeshua there in the first century, the book of Acts and the New Testament, what we call the testimony of Yeshua, what they taught and how they lived. They were The early believers were all Jewish and then eventually the message spread to the Gentiles. And we read about it in the book of Acts. They were all obedient to the law, the law, to the law of Moses. They kept the Sabbath. They kept the biblical feasts. They followed the biblical dietary laws. And, and they loved Yeshua. They believed in the message of the cross. They believed in, in uh, the resurrected Yeshua the, who, was, who came, was incarnated, born of a virgin, and died for our sins on the cross, and, and through him we have faith and have salvation. That message is throughout the, the New Testament. It's called the Gospel Message. But somewhere along the line, the Christian church kind of lost the Jewish flavor of things and got away from that. They kept the message of the cross. They kept the message of Jesus. They changed, changed his name to Jesus. And, um, uh, and, and then let go of the Jewish festivals and the Jewish Shabbat, the biblical Sabbath. Not Jewish, it actually comes out of the Bible. It goes clear back to the uh, time of Moses and all the way back to the beginning of creation. God made these festivals. He made the feasts. He gave these, these, this way of holiness, this walk, this Hebraic walk, this walk of righteousness to all the way back to Adam and Eve and to Enoch and to Noah and to Abraham and to the patriarchs and to Moses and the children of Israel and all the way down to, to Yeshua and the early apostles and they all followed it. And that's what we believe and that's what we teach. And some people will call this the Messianic movement. The word Messianic simply comes from the term Messiah. The Hebrew word is Mashiach and the word Christ uh, as in Jesus Christ is the Greek word. Christos means the anointed one. So a Christian is one who follows the, cre the Christ or the Christos in, in Greek, which means the anointed one. And the word for um, uh, anointed one or Christ in Hebrew is Mashiach. It means the anointed one or one who is smeared with oil. That's Yeshua, the Messiah, or Jesus Christ. And, and so the term Messianic or one who follows the Messiah or the Mashiach is the one who basically... It's another way of saying a Christian, but in more Hebraic terms. And there's many people that follow Jesus. And the Messianic movement, it kind of has two parts. You have the Messianic Jewish movement. And basically the Messianic Jewish movement, more or less, it kind of more or less started in the 1800s, but became really popular more in the, in the uh, second half of the 20th century, in the, uh, in the 1960s when um, there, were, there were people who were going out and, and reaching out to Jews and, and Jewish people and, and trying to witness to them about the faith of Jesus and get them to have faith in Jesus as the Jewish Messiah and then bring them into the Christian church. And, and, and in one sense or another, get them to kind of leave their Jewishness leave a lot of the Jewish traditions and the laws that were done away with, that so says the Christian church, which I don't believe that message, but, but, and, and eventually get them into the Christian church as believers in Jesus. Well, what happened is there were a lot of people, a lot of quote-unquote Gentiles who were coming into these congregations full of Jewish people who were, who were maybe some of them were keeping the Sabbath and the feasts and some of the other Jewish traditions that are maybe not biblical but are, are nice traditions. And so these churches 
for these Jewish converts were filling up with non-Jewish people, or we might call Gentiles, or, um, uh, but anyway, people of non, non-Jewish uh, origins, ethnic origins. And these, these Gentile people were hungry for the Jewish roots. And this was happening in the 1960s and the 70s and the 80s and, it, and up, to this, up to the present time, into the 21st century. Well, what happened along the way is, is that these Christians, Gentiles or non-Jewish people that were coming into the Christian faith or into, the, into the, kind of this Messianic Jewish faith, which was kind of a combination of Jewish traditions, Christianity, and a little bit of Torah. Some of them kept the Sabbath and the feast, but not really. But, you know, there's, there were all different kinds of permutations of this. And you had a lot of, you had a few Jewish people and a lot of Gentile or non-Jewish people who wanted to go deeper in their walk. They wanted to keep the message of the gospel. They wanted to keep the faith of Yeshua. They wanted to keep all the good things that they learned in the Christian church, but they wanted to have a more Hebraic understanding and expression of their biblical faith. They wanted to do what Jesus did, Yeshua. They wanted to use the biblical terminologies like Yeshua and Torah and, and Mashiach and, and the Hebrew names for, for God, Yahweh or Yehovah and, and Elohim and, and the Ruach HaKodesh for the Holy Spirit. And they wanted to actually, you know, grow beards and, and wear fringes and, and prayer shawls and, and these things that the early believers did. And, and they wanted to keep kosher, biblical kosher, and do the biblical feasts and keep the Sabbath, not just talk about it, but actually do it. And so... That, that message wasn't always welcomed in some of these Messianic Jewish Christians, where these Jewish Messianic Jewish congregations, where, where you know, many of the times it was taught that the law was optional, the Torah, God's uh, commandments as given to the children of Israel through Moses uh, were optional, and okay for the Jews, but not for the Gentiles. You know, you have all different kinds of winds of doctrine out there on this subject. And there were people that said, no, wait, that's for us. The early believers, Jews and, and non-Jews, they followed these things. And we want to follow them. We believe there's a blessing. We believe what Yeshua said when he said, not one jot or tittle of the Torah has been done away with. I don't think that I came to destroy the Torah or the commandments. I didn't come to destroy them. I come to expand them into their fullness, into their full um, expression. And they believed what he wrote there in the Sermon on the Mount. And they wanted to practice that. Well, they found themselves having to start their own congregations where they could have a more full uh, expression of the gospel message, walking it out, and yet also walk out the Torah. And that began, if you will, more or less, it's not, this is not overly defined, but more or less the Hebrew Roots Movement, or what we might call the Messianic Israel Movement, because many of these people felt like, like they were they believed what Paul said in Ephesians 2, that when you come to the Messiah, you, he says in Ephesians 2, 11 through 19, you're no longer a Gentile. He says in times past you were Gentiles, without God and without hope. And these Christians coming into their Hebrew roots, their Jewish roots, or biblical roots of the Christian faith, said, well, I, I'm not a Gentile. I'm part of, I'm that one new man. I am now grafted in, Paul talks about that in Romans 11, I'm a son of Abraham, I'm an offspring of Abraham, he says that several times in Galatians chapter 3, and he says that really forcefully in, in, in Galatians 3 verse 29, where he says, if you are in Messiah, then you are the seed, the offspring, the sperm, literally, of, of Abraham. And that's what Paul says. And then in Ephesians 2, 11 through 19, Paul says that you talking about the Gentiles in times past, you were without God, without hope. Aliens, being aliens from the covenants of promise, outside the commonwealth of Israel. You weren't outside the covenants of Israel. You were outside the nation or the citizenship or the commonwealth, outside the tribes of Israel. But now you were brought in by the blood of Yeshua through faith in Yeshua. And the middle wall of partition, that border, that barrier, that man-made barrier that should never have been there, that didn't exist in the Bible, but men put up there in the temple to keep Jews and Gentiles separate, that came down in Yeshua. He's not a respecter person. The Bible message, the gospel message, the Torah message is for everyone, for the Jew and the non-Jew, for the Israelite and the sojourner. 
one Torah. The Torah says one Torah, one law for everybody, the foreign born and the Israelite. And then Paul says they're all one, neither Jew nor Greek, nor the, neither Jew nor Gentile, nor they're neither Jew nor all the people and nations, but they're one new man in Yeshua the Messiah. And these these Christians coming into the Messianic Jewish movement realize that they are, they're that one new man. They're part of Israel. They're part of the 12 tribes. They don't, may not know which tribe they are, but by faith, being grafted in, they're that one new man. After all, the New Jerusalem, there has 12 gates. And I don't know about you, but I want to be in the New Jerusalem. It has 12 gates. And there's only, the gates are named after the 12 tribes of Israel. You can go read about that in Revelation 21 and 22. They're, the gates into the New Jerusalem are named after the 12 tribes of Israel. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Gad, Asher, Naphtali, Ephraim, Manasseh, Joseph, um, Benjamin, all of these tribes, Issachar, Zebulun, there's 12 of them. Actually, 13. Joseph had two sons, and that, that, that made two more, uh, another additional tribe. But anyway, they're named after the 12 tribes of Israel. There is no Gentile gate. So praise the Lord. That's what the Hebrew Roots movement is, or the biblical roots. We're like archaeologists digging down through the traditions of, of, human, of, of, of Christianity. There's tradition upon tradition, kind of like an archaeological dig, like a tell that you'd find in the Middle East, where you have one layer upon another upon another, and we're like spiritual archaeologists digging down to get down to the bedrock of our faith, and it takes us right back to the land of Israel, right back to Jerusalem, right back to the, the, the apostles, right back to Yeshua, right back to not only what they taught, but what they did, what they practiced. Paul told, uh, Yeshua told his disciples, teach in the Great Commission, everything that I've commanded, you teach the children of Israel, or you teach the, the disciples, you teach and take that message to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth, everything I've commanded. Paul said, be an imitator of me as I follow Yeshua. He says that in 1 Corinthians 11, 1. And then he followed what Yeshua did. He was a Sabbath keeper. He was a Torah keeper. He followed the, he, he was passionate for Yeshua. He loved Yeshua. He taught the gospel message in the cross. So did the other apostles who wrote the New Testament or the Testament of Yeshua. Jude, the brother of Yeshua. James, the brother of Yeshua, whose name was Yaakov. Uh, Peter and John and, uh, you know, and the rest of them. So that's the definition, quickly, in about 20 minutes, of the Hebrew Roots Movement. And Elohim right now is calling his people out of Babylon. He says, come out of her, my people, Revelation 18, 4. He's preparing a bride for his son. A bride that is a Hebrew, Jewish, Israelite bride. And we'll talk about that in another video. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I hope that clarified some things in your mind and answered a few questions. And again, this is Natan Lawrence speaking you, to you from the wilderness. The wilderness where we are in a journey spiritually and physically en route to the promised land of the kingdom of heaven where Yeshua the Messiah is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah and praise his name. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon his name. He is near, he is near, he is near. Yeshu Hashem be'ir matzov Oh,